Hey folks, this is part two of this flight controller roundup. So in a minute when the video starts, and yeah, the video hasn't started yet. That's why my face isn't moving. In a minute when the video starts, it's going to feel like I jumped right in in the middle. But it's actually because you jumped right into the middle. You didn't watch part one. Part one is linked down in the video description. Go check it out if you haven't watched it. One more thing, in the intro to the first video, I said I was going to focus just on the flight controllers that were really like at the top of my radar. And just because I left a flight controller out of this roundup doesn't necessarily mean it's bad. Just means that like, just ha isn't at the top of my radar. There's so many out there, it's impossible to hit all the good ones. But you guys in the comments of the first video named a couple that I thought, you know what, they're right. There are a couple that I left out that I wanted to add in. And the two that come to mind are the Furious Fortini F4 OSD and the DYS F4 Pro V2. Those are actually really, really good flight controllers that I just don't, haven't come across my radar. So what I've done, I didn't go back and re-record this whole video just to get them in, but what I did do is I put them in the spreadsheet and so you can go ahead and they're in the video description as well, just like all the others. So you can see how they stack up against the others and check them out. And if you think they're good, you can go ahead and do that. On to the video. Having told you about all those criteria, I am now going to do something really uncharacteristic for me. I'm not going to just sit here and read you this spreadsheet. No, in fact, you can get access to this data directly and you can dig through it and you can kind of decide for yourself which one you think is best. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to just go through these boards and kind of give you like a high level synopsis of what I think stands out about the board. A few notes for some of the boards that aren't in the spreadsheet, so definitely pay attention to those. And then we'll close up with a discussion of who I think each board is the best for. And we'll start here with the Betaflight F4. And we really got to start with the Betaflight F4 because its predecessor, the Betaflight F3, was so dominant. So many people were flying it. I don't know what the percentage was, but it was a really, it had so much of the market. And somewhere between the Betaflight F3 and the Betaflight F4, it feels like there was a stumble. It just doesn't seem like as many people are flying the Betaflight F4 as there were on the F3. And I think some of that has to do with the transition from the F3 to F4. It, there was a point where they stopped selling the F3. And then there was this big window, like it might have been a month. I don't, maybe more. I don't remember. But a long time when people were like, where's the Betaflight F4? I don't know. I don't know if they had production difficulties or something, but... There was this big window where nobody could get the F3 and then nobody could get the F4 and maybe that's when the market moved on. But the Betaflight F4, to my mind, is not as clear a winner as, uh, as the F3 was. And one reason is that people took a lot of cues from the F3. They figured out the things the F3 did right and then they started imitating them, right? So something that was novel is now a little bit more common. But the other thing is that when we go to an F4 flight controller, we get all these issues with protocol inversion. And the short version of that is that some protocols are inverted. Uh, SBUS and SmartPort are the two big ones. And if you have inverted protocols, you need an inverted UART to read the protocol. And on an F3 board, all of the UARTs can do inversion. It's just built into the F3, but on the F4 processor, it is not. And that means that the board designer has to figure out how to solve that problem for you. And the way that the Betaflight F4's designers have solved that problem is pretty clunky, to say the least. If you've got a Betaflight F4 and you want to do all of the common UART-based functions, which are uh, serial receiver, SBUS, smart port telemetry, smart audio for VTX remote control, and ESC telemetry from your BL Heli 32 or KISS ESCs. If you want to do all of those things at once, you really have to jump through some hoops. FPV models recommended approach involves reassigning two of the UART pads to soft, uh, soft serial for smart port and smart audio, and then ESC telemetry is over here. And none of it is a hurdle, an insurmountable hurdle, but it certainly is annoying. Uh, that you have to go through all that and might make you go, well, shoot, I'm just going to get a board, another board that I can do all that on. If there was a board that was a legitimate successor to the Betaflight F3, in my opinion, it's not the Betaflight F4, but the Seal Racing F4. Something about this board really clicked. So many people loved this board, were flying this, didn't, didn't hurt that it was at a very, very reasonable price uh, and just seemed like it really swept the market. 
The Seal Racing F4S was the successor to the Seal Racing F4, and unfortunately, it had a problem. If used with certain ESCs, it would basically have a roll of death. It would just drop out of the sky. The good news is that Chen Ling, the CL in CL Racing, has identified the problem with the F4S's design and fixed it, so if you buy a SEAL Racing F4S today, you should not run into this issue. This flight controller brings, a, you might almost call it like a refined design philosophy. If you compare it to some other flight controllers, they just kind of throw everything in the kitchen sink, they try to support it. And it can sometimes end up with a little bit of an overwhelming or cluttered design for beginners. The F4S feels like it's trying to give you the features you need, but no more. And for some people, this is going to mean it's missing a feature that they want. But for many people, it means it's got exactly what they want and, and not a lot of waste, not a lot of graft in there. Uh, for example, it's got a plug-in header for a 4-in-1 ESC. It's got the ability to use an external current sensor from a 4-in-1 ESC if you so desire, which many of the boards that have built-in PDBs are just are lacking. It's got both a 5 volt and a 9 volt regulator on board. And what that means is that you can run your video transmitter and camera off the 9 volt regulator as opposed to having to run them off a of battery voltage. So they get just a little bit of extra filtering for cleaner video. It's got built in gummies for soft mounting, although it also has the MPU 6000 gyro. These two things together help mean that you're probably not going to need to take any extraordinary steps to avoid video noise or motor noise. We go then from the CL Racing F4S to my own flight controller, the Joshua Bardwell F4. And, you know, when I released a flight controller, some people said, how can you then be objective and do reviews of other flight controllers? And I said, well, I, I hear what you're coming from there. I'm going to do my best. We'll see how, how you hold me to it. And I think the fairest thing to do here is to let my, my flight controller stand on its own merits in the spreadsheet, you can compare the feature set. And if you listen to me talk about four other flight controllers and you can't look at this one and figure out what's good and what's bad about it and how it's how good of a fit it is for you, then well, I really haven't done my job. So here it is, it's the JBF4. I think it's a pretty good flight controller. <laughs> I ought to, I made it. And uh, yeah, check it out, decide for yourself. Next, we come to the Maytech F405. And actually, Maytech has a whole line of flight. I've only, I've actually picked two of them to be in this roundup, but they have a bunch of flight controllers to suit almost any need. And I'm actually really impressed with their design. You know, earlier I talked about boards that bring the kitchen sink. They just try and support all the features. And it is really challenging to support all the features that you might want to support and just fit that on this one little 36 millimeter by 36 millimeter board. It's much harder than just putting dots on the board where you want the pins to be because the resources of the flight controller, the, the, the all the traces have to overlap in the, it's really hard to design a board. And I got to really hand it to Maytech. What they've done with these boards is extraordinary and much, uh, much harder than it looks just to pick up the board and hold it in your hand and go, yeah, it looks like a board to me. Uh, they support so many features in their flight controllers. Uh, if you're not put off by this kitchen sink approach, if you don't mind having some pins on the board that you're not even using and maybe you don't even know what they're for, then this is a really nice flight controller to choose. I especially like that these flight controllers, uh, they have the ribbon cable the F405 does. It has. It doesn't have a built-in PDB, right? So in that sense, it's different than the other flight controllers in this roundup. It's not an all-in-one. But what they did was they have a ribbon cable connection that goes to their FC Hub PDB, or my favorite is the FC Hub VTX, which is a PDB, and then it's got the Maytech uh, video transmitter built in. And that ribbon cable uh, powers the flight controller, provides current sensing to the flight controller, and allows you, if you're using the FC Hub VTX, allows you to remote control the video transmitter. And those two together, well, you know what? I've got a whole video reviewing the FC Hub VTX and the F405. I've got a build series. I'll just put a link in the upper right, and you can check that out. But I, this is a really compelling combination. Uh, yeah, definitely worth your attention. The Holdebro Kakute F4 All-in-One is one of two boards in this roundup that has a soft-mounted gyro. So the idea here is we've got all these problems with gyro noise, right? Well, and we soft-mount the flight controller, but that's complicated because it's stuck in the stack. And what if we just soft-mounted the gyro? And then we can hard-mount the board and not have noise issues. 
Now there's an upside and a downside to this. The upside, of course, is that you can hard mount the board and then you don't have to worry as much about soft mounting. But the downside is like, if you have wires that are bumping up or vibrating against the gyro, it, you can get a lot of problems. So it does add some complexity to mounting. If you usually stick your receiver on top of your flight controller or your video transmitter on top of your flight controller, or if you usually build really tight stacks right up against each other with wires crammed in between, well, that's not gonna work with this board. This board works best when it's on top of a stack or if it's got something mounted on top of it, if there's just clear space in between them. But it does mean that you can run, uh, well, you, you can have the ICM series gyro running at 32 kilohertz without having to worry as much about soft mounting. And you can run higher D gains and so forth without getting hot motors. Basically, it's, it's more noise resistant. It's also got a really nice layout uh, a very feature filled layout without being over complicated. The main disadvantage of a board like this, one of them is that this ribbon cable, people worry that the ribbon cable is going to be fragile. And I haven't found that these ribbon cables break in a crash so much, but especially if you're a little bit sloppy with your soldering iron, if you damage it uh, when you're soldering up the board, you, you can replace it. In fact, it comes with a spare. But soldering on the replacement, it, well, if you're the kind of person who's going to damage it because you were sloppy with your soldering, you're probably not going to be successful at soldering on the replacement either. So this may not be the best board for just a rank beginner unless you're just absolutely, you just got to be really careful not to damage that ribbon cable. The Maytec F405 CTR is the second generation of the Maytec F405 all-in-one. And the F405 all-in-one has the dubious distinction of being one of the only products I have ever said, just don't buy it. Now, the issue with the F405 all-in-one was so many people who were using it had issues with gyro noise, yaw twitches, twitchy motors, and just they would add capacitors and they would soft mount it. And some people got it flying good and many people just never got it flying good. And I just say, well, why roll the dice, right? Just buy something that's likely to work. Maytech makes the argument, well, Maytech made all kinds of arguments about why it should be okay, but the bottom line was a lot of people never got the all-in-one flying right, and Maytech finally said, oh, sc fine, screw you guys, we're going back, they didn't say that, I, I made that up, <laughs> we're going back to the drawing board, you want a, you want one with an MPU 6000 gyro that's less prone to noise, here it is, so that's what the F405 CTR is, and it's on my list because on paper, the F405 all-in-one has a great feature set, great layout, but the noise issues were just too much to ignore. So taking the F405 all-in-one and putting a, a noise-free gyro like the MPU 6000 on it should make a pretty good flight controller. Finally, we've got the Omnibus F4 Pro Corner, and this board has a really cool layout. Uh, they've addressed the problem. We get all this stuff crammed on the board and it can be hard to fit, physically fit, all of the circuitry and all of the pads that we need on the board. The F4 Pro Corner has taken the Omnibus design. Omnibus has been great flight controllers way back when the Omnibus F3 was one of the first flight controllers to have built-in Betaflight OSD and an SD card on board. That's so normal now it's hard to remember that there was a time when that was a big deal, but... It was one of the first, and it, this has just been a really solid design the whole way through. Uh, I pick on Airbot, who is the designer of this board, sometimes because uh, I say Airbot, never buy V1 of any Airbot product. It seems like a lot of times Airbot brings things to market and expects their customers to understand that they're still working on it. And they're like, hey, if you want to take a chance, go for it. But sometimes customers buy V1 of an Airbot product expecting it to be a little bit refined, and they don't always get that. But the Omnibus line, as far as I can remember, has always been pretty solid. And the Omnibus Pro Corner takes that and adds this really cool corner pad layout where you get the ESC telemetry, the signal, the ground, and the power without having to give up space on the board. Another thing that makes the F4 Pro Corner stand out is that it's available with both a 6000 gyro or the ICM series gyro. It's the exact same board, just a different gyro stuck on top. So you can pick. And in fact, in theory, you could swap because you can see it's held on there with a ribbon cable. This gyro is soft mounted, similar to the Kakute, but it's actually got a little plastic case around it to help protect it a little bit from vibrations. And it's got a little bit of different damping. I think it's a gel based instead of a foam based uh, mounting. So there's that. 
Now that we've gotten a high level look at each of these boards, let me give you some final thoughts about ways that some of these boards stand out for certain specific applications. For example, if you want to fly iNav, sensor assisted, GPS assisted flight, you're going to want a board with an onboard barometer and the I2C or I squared C pads to wire up your GPS and magnetometer unit. And the boards that fit that bill are the Maytech F405 CTR and the Holy Bro Kakute F4 all in one and the Omnibus F4 Pro Corner. These are going to be the boards that you're going to want to focus on if you're gonna do iNav or other sensor assisted flight. If you're interested in running Crossfire, all of these boards will do it no problem. But I'm sorry to say that the one board that has slightly more trouble than the others is my own board, the JBF4 all-in-one. On my board, there is only one UART that has both the TX and the RX pad broken out on top. And that means that if you wanna do Crossfire and smart audio at the same time, you have to use soft serial and give up the LED strip pad. Now that's not such a big deal unless you also want to use programmable LEDs, in which case you wouldn't be able to do all three of those things at once with my board. And some of you might just not want to go to the hassle of doing, you know, pasting those lines into the command line. I certainly understand that. You just want to solder it up and be, be done. So for Crossfire users, any of these boards will do, but my board is slightly more hassle than any of the others. If you're doing ESC telemetry, your wiring will be neater if you choose the F405 CTR, the Kakute F4 all-in-one, or the Omnibus F4 Pro corner. All of those boards have ESC telemetry pads at the corners where the motor wires are gonna solder up. The other boards all support ESC telemetry, but the wiring will be a little bit sloppier because it's all, all four of the wires are gonna get pulled back to a single pad. If the Betaflight camera control feature is a big, that's the feature where you can remote control your camera's OSD menu to change the settings from your transmitter. If that's a big deal, then you definitely want to look at the Maytech F405 or the F405 CTR. The reason is these boards today will require an external circuit, a resistor and a capacitor maybe, but at some point in the future when Betaflight supports the DAC function, that's going to be way simpler and these boards are the only ones in the roundup that have the DAC pad broken out. However, if you want to use camera control today, the Seal Racing F4S and the JB F4 All-in-One are the two boards that have the camera control resistor built in today, and it may make things a little easier. A lot of people are successfully, you, it depends on the camera, frankly, or you can just wire the camera up, no additional circuitry required today. Most people today are running a video transmitter that either runs off of VBAT or it runs off of a regulator like the 7.6 or the 9 volt regulator on the Seal Racing F4S or the JBF4. But a few people are running a five volt video transmitter. Uh, of course, the TBS Unify is a big one or the Eosheen VTX03, which some people like to run. These are five volt video transmitters. The VTX03 is gonna have no problem running on any of these boards. It doesn't, it's not, I think it maxes out at 200 milliwatts. But the Unify five volt video transmitter needs a pretty beefy five volt regulator. All of these boards are going to have no problem. They all have at least a 1.5 amp 5 volt regulator, and some of them have a 2 amp 5 volt regulator. However, the Maytech F405 doesn't have any 5 volt regulator at all. It depends on the PDB, whether that's the FC Hub or the FC Hub VTX or some other PDB. So if you combine the F405 with the FC Hub VTX, you've only got a 1 amp 5 volt regulator but that doesn't matter because then you're not using the five volt Unify, are you? <laughs> you're using the FC Hub VTX. So basically all of these boards are gonna have no problem with whatever video transmitter you decide to use with them. And then the last thing we might compare these guys on is price, which I just haven't even mentioned until now because they all pretty much come in at around 30, 35, or maybe 40 bucks, depending on which one. And although you know the difference between 30 and 40 bucks is 10 bucks, that's not nothing, but over the price of a whole quad, probably that's not gonna be the thing that makes the decision for you. If you are absolutely really just cannot afford even 30 or 35 bucks for a flight controller. And yeah, I know, I know some of you guys are out there, especially those of you guys who don't buy things in US dollars. Yeah, I, yeah. Um, there are other flight controllers you could pick. In fact, I have on my Ultimate FPV shopping list website, I have a link to the Omnibus 
F3 or F4 Pro. I'll go look at it and you just see it. It's about 20, 25 bucks. And for me, that's just the cheapest flight controller I would even think about getting. But frankly, I think, especially if you think about the fact that you might have to buy, the cheaper ones usually don't have a PDB. So you're gonna have to spend another five or seven bucks on a PDB, at which point the difference between like a really cheap flight controller and some of the ones on this list is, is really just starts to close the gap. So although you can find cheaper flight controllers out there, I think these really, when you consider the features you get, this is really where you ought to be as you're shopping for a flight controller. And they're all kind of in that range of 30 to 40 bucks. And so I don't really think price is gonna be the thing that decides it for you. And that is gonna bring us to the end of this flight controller roundup. And I hope that those of you who have watched the whole thing have a much better idea now of you know, what kind of things to think about as you're comparing features on these flight controllers. And uh, for those of you who just said, ah, oh, screw it, I'll just look at the spreadsheet and I'll make my own decision. Yeah, you're not here right now. So glad I could help you out. <laughs> if there's anything that you're still confused about or you still think, maybe you think I overlooked something, leave it down in the comments, of course. And if I've helped you make a buying decision, I hope you will consider using the affiliate links in the video description or over at the Ultimate FPV Shopping List at fpvknowitall.com. Uh, again, link in the video description. Uh, it's very helpful to me if you use those affiliate links whether you buy one of these flight controllers or if you buy anything, I still get credit for the sale if you just click the affiliate link before you go fill up your cart. Thank you so much for your support. That's going to do it. We're done. Are we done? I think we're done. Happy flying, you guys. Bye-bye.